I'm James Robinson. I'm the lead pastor at First Baptist Church in California City. And I'm here to invite you to come out to the Power to Change Crusade. This is going to take place October 13th and 14th, a Friday and a Saturday. The, the event's going to start at 5 p.m. on each of those days. But the gates will open at 4 p.m., so come early. Come and get some good seats. It's going to happen at the Hangar, uh, formerly Jet Hawk Stadium in Lancaster, California. We plan to pack that place. Do you like motocross? We have a motocross exhibition that's going to happen, a freestyle motocross exhibition. You're, you're not going to want to miss that. Do you like wrestling? Well, we've got wrestling also. We've got, got an entertainment wrestling that's going to happen. Um, but more importantly, uh, Dr. and Pastor uh, Jim Doherty is going to speak the gospel to us each day, as well as we're going to have some wonderful worship music from, from groups right around our own area. Now, you're not going to want to miss this uh, I'm hoping that you're as excited as I am. And, and oh, by the way, it's free. Free admission and free parking. If you want to know more about it, go to the Power to Change website. That's power, the number two, change.org. Or you can go to the High Desert Baptist Association website. That's hdba.net. You're not going to want to miss this event. Tell everybody about it. And bring them on out. God bless you. Well, amen. Welcome. Welcome to First Baptist Church, California City. We're glad to have you here. All right. Hey, um, oh, I see there we got the doors closed so nobody can get out. Um, uh, we just want to uh, let you know that you're here by God's appointment. It's not an accident. Uh, you know, somebody dragged you here. It's for, it's for a purpose. So... Uh, just let that sink in and, and let God work this morning. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, announcements this morning. So um, let's see. Uh, I don't see it up there, but we have a, a deacons meeting today at 3 o'clock. So if you're a deacon here, uh, please be here. We're going to be discussing some stuff that needs to be discussed. And uh, so make that a point to be here on the 17th, which is today. Um, we were doing the 101 class, and the 201 class uh, was held up because uh, the instructor was gone. But the 101 class, I guess that worked out pretty well. Is any, I, you, just you? Were you the only one there? A couple? Okay, great. Good. So we'll keep that one going. On the 21st, which is a Thursday, uh, Mary and Eric, uh, our India mission, um, She's a member of our church. She's going to be talking about her service there in India. And uh, I, I guess at 6 o'clock, and I think there's going to be some, some food. Is that right? There's going to be something. So I, some people need that, I guess, <laughs> as an extra incentive. Uh, so High Desert Baptist annual meeting uh, on the 23rd. Uh, 9 a.m. at First Baptist Church Barstow. Um, that is our association that we uh, partner with other Baptist churches in the area. They're going to be having a meeting there. And then uh, that same day, which is Saturday, there's going to be a study for bearing fruit. And that's an ongoing study. Uh, hopefully, Stevie will be back in time for that. If not, I don't know. You, you may be by yourself on that one. And then uh, the worship team is going to be meeting after service next Sunday. Is that correct? Our worship leader? Oh, yes. <laughs> I was praying in my mind. Well, there you go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard that one before. I think you have too. Okay, um, other upcoming events. All right, so Camp Ironwood, that's going to be in two weeks. Well, I guess there's a couple. Let's say a couple of women are probably ready to get rid of their husbands. So, But uh, we, I need to know uh, who's going. Um, I, I've got... Uh, 
they're going to turn a, a number in there. You still go at the last minute, but uh, they always like to know how many people are going so they can set up the... Uh, um, Pastor James is going, okay, so that's, that's, that's one. Uh, uh, it's $220. Uh, if you would like to go, but you need help with that $222, uh, come see me, see the pastor, uh, and we will make a way for you to go. There's no reason why you can't go and get a blessing. Uh, so if you are a, a young man, 16 or older, and would like to go, see me, see the pastor. We'll make that happen for you. Uh, it's it's life changing in a good way. So let's go to the next one. Trunk or treat. Woo! So that's coming up. I think I think that's actually going to happen on a Tuesday. Yeah, so it's going to happen on a Tuesday night. Um, we have uh, yeah. We, well, it's trunk or treat. But we, but we uh, we have. Everything uh, in place, is that right, Jessica? Sort of? It's in the works. It's in the works? Okay, so we need volunteers. Is there a sign-up for volunteers yet? So there is a sign-up for Trunk or Treat in the foyer. So please, if you'd like to get involved in any way, uh, security, uh, to bring a trunk, uh, food service, please uh, sign up, and uh, we'll contact you. And, and when's the next meeting? Do you know? We have a meeting. Okay, that's to be turned also. So, but it's on its way. All right. So next one. Birthdays. There's a grip of birthdays here. So Jay, did I see Jay here? I thought I saw him. Maybe not. Uh, Lucas. Where did Lucas come? I, I thought I saw his dad over there. Is he okay? Lucas is here. All right, Dylan, uh, I don't think I saw the greens here. I'm gonna have to give them a call. Tia, I thought I saw Tia just walk in there. All right, uh, Jeff Kruger, Rusty, is he here? Is he here, no, no? Uh, Mary, Mary DeSouza, is Mary here? Was she here in the first service? She was here at the eight o'clock service? Okay, Jackie Canale. I thought I saw her. Uh, Krista Green, I think that her birthday, and Jamie McCaleb. Is Jamie McCaleb here? She, she was in the first service. Got to keep an eye on her. Ron Wallace. And, and his twin, Jessica. You guys are born on the same day, right? right? And then Don Paris. And hopefully, Don, you're watching on the video. We definitely want to give you guys uh, a rousing happy birthday. So if we could just, if you can, stand so that we can honor them with a happy birthday. Is that okay? All right. All right. Are, are, are we all ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. Okay, thanks, guys. Oh, you can you can have a seat now. Sorry. I don't think we're getting ready to start just yet. So Jay and Lana, are you are you guys here today? Where is everybody? All right. Oh, and, and what about Lauren and Megan? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Megan pulls it out of the fire. All right. So how many years, Megan? 50 years. Whoa. 50 years. Wow. 15. That's awesome. All right. Well, guess what? It's time for baptism. Stand up for a minute. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
This is, this is Connor. Connor and I uh, shared a, a moment last week. We went to Grace Fest, and, and he was sitting next to me, and he was pretty excited. Uh, and they were having baptisms at Grace Fest. And, and he asked, can I get baptized? And I said, oh, well, here, here we go. <laughs> so I, I had to test him a little bit. And, and I asked him why he wanted to be baptized. And uh, he gave me the right answers. Um, but we didn't want to do it at Grace Fest. Because mom wasn't there. And uh, a lot of people would have missed out. If we'd done it at Grace Fest with the, the big old crowd there, it had been exciting for them, but uh, I think this is a little bit more appropriate. Amen. Why don't you have a seat there? <laughs> He's up on his legs. He's excited. Does water feel good? Come on. Does water feel good? Yeah. It feels great, doesn't it? Connor, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. I don't think they can hear you. Yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> Why don't you cross your arms for me? Connor, by your profession, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Stand up here and let him take some pictures. Stand up. This water feels awfully good. We got any other partakers? All right. Thank you for your witness, Connor. Let's, let's do some worship. How about it? Right. Come on. Who's ready to worship? If you're able to stand, Push that lower button. stand to our feet and worship God today. Amen.
Jesus for the blood, but it's because it's kind of my story after the second and third time I came back to him. Have you ever felt like, I want, I want to come back to you, God, but it's just too big. The str I already knew that, and I still did it anyway, but the stretch is too big. I've done too much, right? I'm just going to stay right here. But there's a line in the song that says, but from the far side of the chasm, when I was convincing myself I was finally worthless, right? He kept me in his sight. Amen? And he made a way. He made a way. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood that covers everything. There is not one thing that you cannot bring to him today that he cannot cover and make new. Amen? Amen. Let's worship him, church.
brought me into a glorious light. You know, this next song that we're going to do, Waymaker. Are you believers? Amen. 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 Yes, we are believers. We believe that God can do anything. Amen. Anytime, anywhere. He can do anything. He is the Waymaker. He is the Waymaker. Please, with all your heart, please believe that he is the
Okay, as you find your seats, could you join, join with me in prayer uh, for this offering that we're going to give to the Lord as a, as a way to worship, and this is truly worship uh, of all that we have. And so, Father, we just ask that you would uh, bless this time of offering, that we would just give to you, Lord, as, as we see you and, and what you do in our lives. So, Lord, we, we give this to you with a pure heart and a happy heart. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Everybody hear me okay? Hey, Amen. Why don't we get Team Kid to come on up here? Let's, let's give him a little encouragement. Come on, let's find us a seat right here. Right here. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. Is anybody here blessed? We, we need to understand that we have come here today to say thank you to God to show our love that we have for God, because he first loved us. You know, today you got this beautiful woman over here that's going to be teaching you and Team Kid. That's my wife, by the way. <laughs> and she's going to be talking about the story of Esther. E e Esther was a beautiful Jewish woman who didn't completely understand God's plan and purpose for her life but she was open to it. She was open to God working in her life. And she had a great opportunity. Now, how many of you love your family? Hey, come on. I'm, I'm looking for 100% here. We got to love our family. <laughs> Anybody don't have their hand raised, we got to talk after this, okay? <laughs> Esther loved her family. But there was some evil going on, wanting to get to her family. Now, I'm going to be talking with everybody else as you go to Team Kid about mountains. Anybody know what a mountain is? Yeah. We're living on a mountain. It's so far, and mountains are so far away in Tehachapi. Well, there is. There's one up here called Tehachapi. Man, you got a lot going on in that head, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, so mountains are, they're, they're, they're part of the earth, right? But mountains are also other things. Mountains can be our problems. See, Esther had a problem. Even though she had been promoted to the queen, they were talking about killing her family. That's a bad situation, isn't it? Now, so she had to do something. Do you know what she did? She prayed. She prayed. 
and she also denied herself. In other words, she wasn't just trying to take care of herself. She had to make herself vulnerable, which is something that sometimes is very difficult to do. But because of her obedience, God delivered her family. That's pretty special, isn't it? Now, I can tell you, you've already had some mountains in your life, even though you may not have recognized it. And you're going to have a lot more as you live on this earth. But I want you to always think, first of all, to turn to God, to talk to Him. He's got an answer for everything that is going on in your life. So why don't we stand up so, so my beautiful bride can go get you guys educated on Esther. Would somebody like to close this part in prayer? Come, come on up here, Coraline. I know you haven't been feeling too well. You feeling better? All right. So what, what do we do? Let's, we got everybody stand. All right. Let's, let's close our eyes and bow our head. Dear Jesus, I pray, thank you for dying cross for our sins. And I pray, thank you for all of us being here to learn about you today and every Sunday. Dear Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So let's walk back to Team Kid. All right, let's, let's play nice with each other. Let's go on back here. All right, before you sit down, let's find somebody and, and let's remind them that there are mountains that God's going to move in their life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. This, this is the interaction part. All right, after you found somebody, let's return to our seats. I got, I got an hour and 45 minutes of slides. <laughs> God bless y'all. Morning, Doc. So, so this has been a special week for me. Obviously, we had Grace Fest last week. We had Patriot Day, Church in the Park. We got to honor our first responders. I, I, I really appreciate that, the outpouring last week. And it's something that we should be doing all the time. Our first responders should know that the church, Jesus' church, loves them and that we support them. I also had the opportunity this week uh, to go to the hangar, formerly Jet Hawk Stadium. Uh, they're doing a little remodeling out there. It really, it's, it, 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 it is a fabulous place. And we've got a great opportunity with this crusade coming up. I got to meet the exhibition team uh, for the motocross. They're going to be jumping from third base over to first base, doing flips and all kinds of things in the air. It's going to be pretty spectacular. Uh, hopefully the wind and everything cooperates. I ask that you be praying for that. Uh, we'll have the wrestling team that's going to be there. They're going to be right on home plate. And it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. But that's not really why we're doing it. That's the draw. That's the, the hook. We're, we're doing it because we, we feel that urgency, that urgency for all the broken and the lost in this world. And, and Dr. Jim has got a great message prepared, an evangelistic message uh, to, to touch people's hearts. And we're expecting to see people come down out of those stands and receive Christ that day. You know, we, we're building up to it. We're already starting to see revival happening in our community. We see people coming to Christ. We're seeing His activity over and over again. You know, it's not the crusade that's, that, that's really the point here. It, 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 excuse me, it is the crusade. It's not the event that's, the, that's important here. It's our battle. This is a real battle that we're in. And I was asked last week at the concert of prayer to pass this on, and, I, and I, I want each of you to join in with me. How many of you know John 
A pretty popular verse, right? I mean, some of us have it memorized. And uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. That's a, that's a great verse, isn't it? And it's really it's kind of foundational towards what we're trying to do in this crusade. It's a battle. So what we're asking is every day at 316, 316 p.m., please take one minute and pray for the lost. We're asking you to have people on your mind. People that, that may not know God. Uh, people that don't exhibit the fruits of the Spirit in their life. And, and we're asking you to pray for them at that time. Right on up to the crusade. Because we are. We know that God's doing the, the, the work in front of us. We, we already see it. We see all the things that have happened. Uh, the amazing things that have happened. And, and, and and we want more of it. So, so every day at 316, what are we going to do? Pray. Pray. We're going to pause and pray. Set your, set, you know, we got all these things floating around now. We might as well make use of them, right? <laughs> and oh, by the way, if yours isn't on silent, now would be a good time. <laughs> but set your alarm, 316. Take one moment. It's, I'm, it's not asking that much. Matter of fact, you should want to do it as a disciple of Christ, as his child. You know, last week we talked about making a connection in our prayer, actually hearing what God has to say. And I told you last week that, that he speaks through his word. And he does. He, he, he guides our entire life. He, he has laid it out. That is a treasure that has been given to us through the Bible. And I would encourage you to get into it every single day. And not just, not just to pray, but to pray in God's word. To seek him out. To, to seek his understanding. Because that's how true prayer is going to be answered. You know, because he speaks to us that way. And, of course, last week I reminded us that he speaks to us a different way also. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, it says, Do not refuse the one who is speaking. God, because when, when, when his children don't listen, uh, he's going to shake things up a little bit. Because he has another way of speaking to you. Any good parent has another way of speaking to their child when they don't listen. And, and quite frankly, it's not pleasant. It's much better to listen to him right up front and to take his direction right up front so that he doesn't have to disturb your life. Uh, So today I do, I, I want to talk about moving mountains. Uh, our story is kind of a bookend story. I've, I've given this message before. I usually give it around Easter, and it uh, has to do with a fig tree. And, uh, and Jesus has a little problem with the fig tree that we'll go over in detail. You see, like I was telling them, nobody likes to be in a position of vulnerability. We always want to be able to fix it. We always want to be able to defend ourselves. We always want to be in control. But the truth is, He's God and we're not. Amen. And until we realize that, until we're ready to, to surrender it all over to Him, uh, we are going to struggle in this life. God has a plan for His creation. God created you and me to glorify God. Him. Not to go off and do our own thing, to find our own way, as the world would have you to believe. But He's got a plan for you, and, and, and it's such a great plan. I, I mean, it's an eternal plan. Who in here would like the power to move mountains? You know, as I was telling the kids, yeah, we have Tehachapi Mountain up here. We've got Mount Whitney. We, we, we know the, the mountains of the topography of this earth. But, you know, there's other things that are called mountains in God's Word. In God's Word, we know that the kingdom of God is a mountain. We know the kingdom of Satan is a mountain. There, there are things that we deal with all the time. And, and there are things in our life that become mountains. 
It, it might be something as simple as missing car keys. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you got to be there now. You, you've run up to the last minute and you think you got everything together and you, where's the keys? Where's the car keys? That could be a mountain in your life, right? Or, or the car stalling on you. Or, or something a lot more serious. You, you get that diagnosis of cancer. All of a sudden, you got a major mountain in your life. And you need to be able to draw upon the almighty power of God to deal with those impossible situations. You might be having trouble paying your bills. And we want God to work over all of our issues in our life. We want God to be able to move those mountains that are preventing us from living the abundant life that He has called us to live. With this in mind, let's take 60 seconds now. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'm going to ask you to try to clear your mind so that you can receive what God is saying through His Word today. Give me 60 seconds. Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. I thank of your word where you, you tell us to be still and know that you are God. I thank you for my brothers and sisters that have come here this morning to know you. Uh, Father, as we unpack your word this morning, I know there are needs to be met. I know that there are impossible mountains in front of people right now, Lord, uh, that they don't have any clue of how they're going to uh, survive the next day and, and get around it. Uh, but, Father, we, we thank you for who you are and the power that you have and, and that you bestow upon us your blessings and love. Father, help us to examine uh, your word today to draw close to you, uh, to understand how you're working in our lives, our purpose for glorifying you. And uh, may we truly uh, bring a smile to your face and joy to your heart as we listen and approve this morning, and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, when we think about mountains, I, I am, I'm talking about the troubles in your life. Uh, we look back at the prophet Zechariah in chapter 4, verse 7. He's, he, he is explaining, he is speaking to this mountain. He says, what are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain and he will bring out the capstone accompanied by shouts of grace, grace to it. You see, the king had an issue. Uh, they, they were uh, in a difficult time. And he was a man with limitations. Lots of limitations. But with God... He could move mountains. And the mountain that he needed was the rebuilding of the temple and the nation during this time. And, and the prophet spoke it into existence. It was the power of God speaking through him that allowed this to happen. So today I, I want to talk about moving mountains. 
and we're going to start off by looking uh, kind of at the last day, and we'll come back to the first day and work our way through it. But in Mark chapter 11 is our story. And we read in verses 20 and 21, it says, Early in the morning, as they were passing by, they saw a fig tree withered from the roots up. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. Hmm. Now, we need to back up to understand what's really happening here. Earlier in the chapter, back in verses 12 through 14, we read, The next day when they came out from Bethany, he was hungry. He being Jesus was hungry. After seeing in the distance a fig tree with leaves, he went out to find if there was anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Now, Jesus, we got to understand, was fully man. You ever been hungry? You, you ever had a desire for something to eat? That, that's me every 10 minutes. <laughs> Not that I'm hungry, but I feel like I'm hungry every 10 minutes. I'm always trying to put something in my face. But he was really hungry. And, and Jesus, the creator of everything, knows that when this fig tree that he sees in the distance has leaves on it, it has figs. If it's like it's supposed to be, it will have figs. There's not supposed to be leaves without figs. He came to where he expected to find figs and found none. It was a lie. The leaves showed there, there were supposed to be figs, but there were none. This was an external show with no internal fruit. There's the look of fruit, the look of something that could maintain me physically, but it wasn't true. The tree was a deception. Jesus cursed the tree because it was a lie, and that's something important for us to think about, something very important because the story gets a little deeper here. The real story is in between the day he cursed the tree and the day they found it completely withered. As we go into verses 15 through 17, we read, They came to Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. He went to church, the temple complex, and began to throw out those buying and selling in the temple. He's a happy man. He overturned the money changers' tables and the chairs of those selling doves and would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple complex. Then he began to teach them. Is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. You see, Jesus came to this tree expecting to find something to take care of his physical being. He was hungry. Now he goes to church. Yesterday he was hungry for physical need. Today he's hungry for a spiritual need need he found a fake fig tree and today he goes into church and he finds fake religion he went to the right place he went to the church he went to the temple he, he's well amongst the right people there was a priest there uh, he should be finding all the things of God they should be worshiping God they, they should be uh, doing everything they can to take care of each other and loving on each other there should be fruits of the Spirit found there. And he found people putting on a facade. They're showing up on Sunday, but they're not really there for the right reason. They were not there in spirit and truth, which is how we are to worship God. Religion without reality is like a tree, a fig tree with leaves with no figs. It's adultery. It's a lie. It's a deception. And God recognizes that. 
Matthew 23, 27, he's talking to the church leaders. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but on inside are full of dead men's bones and empty every impurity. See, the real story is between the days of the fig tree. Jesus looks close at his church. And all he sees is leaves. He doesn't see any spiritual fruit. There's no power of God. No spirit of God. So many churches get caught up in making money. And putting on programs. But they fail to be the church. Jesus is offended with a righteous anger. He has every right to be mad when we're faking it, when we're deceiving others, when the others see the hypocrisy in us. And he reminds these subject matter experts of the scripture, of the law, says, it is written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And yet in the Jewish temple, all I see are Jews. All I see is you being self-centered. You're my ambassadors. You're supposed to be out there telling this world about me. In Mark eleven twenty one. 21 where we started. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. Now, pay attention. Peter's making a statement. But Jesus is answering as if, as if it's a question. Jesus sees man's heart. And he knows what's going on inside of Peter. Peter is trying to fathom this in his mind how could this have happened so quickly you cursed it yesterday and, and, it, and it's not just the leaves that are withered or whatever it's withered from the root up this tree is completely dead he's trying to understand how it could be so dramatic this is when Jesus reveals the secret to moving mountains in our lives you see, as a disciple of Christ, you should know the secret to moving the mountains in your life. You, you should know how to deal with all those things that are thrown at you. And Jesus replied to them, have faith in God. Th there it is. Have faith in God. In God. He said, this is the key. This is how you move mountains in your life. You are his children. Do you not think he's going to take care of you? In Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, it says, Because of your little faith, he told them, For I assure you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, which, which is pretty hard to see, actually, you will tell this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not come out except in, by prayer and fasting. In other words, when you want to be in control, don't even ask God. You got no answer coming. Until you're ready to surrender yourself and, and take on His will and purpose for your life, you're not going to get answers. This is not the prosperity gospel where you just say it, name it, and claim it. It doesn't work. That's a deception. That's a lie. What you get is God's will, His, His word, and His character. That's, that's how you get your prayers answered. He says you must have faith in the right object. You cannot have faith in your faith and expect to get answers from God. You've got to have faith in God. You've got to have faith in His Word. So many people struggle to believe in His Word. 
every bit of it is true. You've got to have faith in God's will. Because He does. He has a will for each and every one of us long before we created. He created this entire universe and planet for us. And we must believe and completely trust in God's character. If He says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. He can't lie to us. It's outside of His nature. It's outside of His character. We Come on down to verse 23 in Mark 11. It says, I assure you. Jesus is saying, I assure you. Can we stand on that? I assure you, if anyone says to this mountain, this problem that's in your life, this difficulty that you cannot overcome in your own power, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Again, this isn't the prosperity gospel. This means that you are in a relationship with God. That you know who God is. That you are gaining an understanding of Him greater and greater every day in your prayers as you study His Word. And your Word is being transformed into your life so that you have the mind of Christ. So that when you ask, it's going to be done because it's God's will. You see, Jesus is probably standing by this fig tree and it probably looks down into the sea a few miles away or what have you. And he tells them, hey, if you have the faith in God, all you've got to do is ask and he's going to move this problem away from you. He says, don't just talk to me, also talk to your problem. You get to talk to your problem. You get to tell it where to go. In God's will and, and, and in His nature and His, His character and His word. In verse 24, this is important. Therefore I tell you, all things you pray and ask for, believe that you have received them and you will have them. Mm. This, this one always gets us to thinking, right? Uh, now, now I ask the prayer, I haven't received it, but I'm to believe that I have received it. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, but it's not just pretending. It's knowing with confidence that I have received the answer to my prayer because I'm in God's will and, and, and His Word promises it. There is a difference between God's unconditional will and His conditional will. You see, His unconditional will is going to happen whether you say anything or not. Whether you exist or not. It's his prerogative. It's going to happen. But then there's his conditional will. You, you see, there's conditions placed upon our life and our relationship with God that require us to pray, that require us to submit, that require us to obey his commands and believe to tap into the power that he has already predestined us to have. By His will, His power. Many of the things we pray for we do not get because we did not meet His condition in the first place. I mean, those, those weak prayers where we just kind of say, yeah, God, please take care of that. Uh, how, how far do you think that's going to go? Or, or dude, how about it? Hey, bro. And, and we do. We find that humorous, but that is completely disrespectful, is it not, to the all-powerful, all-knowing God? And we wonder why our prayers don't get answered. We must have the fruit of the Spirit to be able to access His power. Many of the things we pray for, we do not get because we don't meet those conditions. Often you will not know what God's unconditional will is versus his conditional will so you always got to treat it like it's conditional you should be praying for God about everything if it's conditional it will be answered and our answer should always be your will be done that's how you access God and his power for you 
In 1 John 5, 14 through 15, Now this is the confidence that we have before Him. Whenever we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked Him for. This is effective prayer. According to His will, He hears us. That, and that should suffice for you and me in this life. God must prepare the answer for our prayer. But He also has to prepare us for the answer. Because it's His will, not ours. Everything is in God's hands. But if it's conditional, you better do your part. By being in His Word. By being in His will. And always in His character. Through spiritual prayer. That's the foundation of God's love for us. Let's go down a little bit farther. And finally in verses 25 and 26 in Mark 11. And whenever you stand praying. here, This is important. We've talked about this over the last few weeks. If you have anything against anyone. Forgive him. So that your Father in heaven will also forgive you and your wrongdoing. But if you don't forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your wrongdoing. You know, so many times uh, we have this problem in our very own church. So, so let me be clear. I'm talking about forgiveness, not reconciliation. There's a huge difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness is completely different than reconciliation. Reconciliation requires all the, all the things to come back together. But forgiveness is so much different. Forgiveness is where you, you no longer hold that debt over somebody else. You, you no longer allow that to come between you and your relationship with God. Because believe me, when there is a debt hanging over somebody else in your relationship, God knows it. And he will not forgive you if you're not willing to forgive them. That's a promise from him. He says, don't ask me. I got nothing for you. This is important. We, we wonder why we struggle here in the church sometimes. And we live our lives like this. It should not happen here in the church. Are we going to offend each other? I'm going to offend you. I, I promise you that. But there's an expectation of constant forgiveness in those offenses. And when we can't do that, when we've got to have the vengeance for ourselves, we'll never get God's answer to our prayers. Romans 12, 19, Paul reminds us, friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for His wrath. For it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. God says, you want me to move your mountain? You want me to get rid of your problem? You better be forgiven other people. This is why Joseph, we talked about him here a while back. This is why Joseph was able to forgive his brothers. He wasn't reconciled. They didn't make it right. They, they sold him off into slavery. They counted him as dead. But when it came time, when he had the opportunity, God had been working in his life. God's hand was on him, and he was able to say, I forgive you. And save them as a result. Who is God going to save in your life as a result of your forgiveness? Unless you have faith in God, you will do the wrong thing because you will not see His will in your life. All you will see is the evil that is deceiving you now. The struggles that you're having, the mountains that impair your vision. 
1 Peter 3, 9 says, Not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, give a, giving a blessing since you were called to this so that you can inherit a blessing. You see, so many people want what God has, but they don't want God to change them so that they can have it. Here at First Baptist Church, I want us to see things from God's point of view. I, I want us to be a house of prayer that He has commanded us to be. I want us to be a church that brings life into other people's lives. I want the power of God to work through the people in this church to, to restore our community. Not for the music or the message. That's not why we come here. We come here because of our relationship with God. I want to see relationships restored. I want to see sicknesses healed. I want to see the miracles that God has for, for this family, for this community. You see, when we are the real disciples of Christ and cry out to God in prayer and in faith, we will speak to our mountains and they will be moved. We need to forgive those who have offended us so that we can see our mountains moved, so that they can see the mountains moved in their life, so that they can feel the love of God. You, you know, we, we all have struggles in life, don't we? Let's, let's stand up while the worship team come on, comes on up. I might actually beat 12 o'clock here. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to my brothers and sisters. But there's a possibility. I, I never make an assumption. There's a possibility there might be somebody here that's not yet my brother or sister. There, there might be somebody here that hasn't accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And, and the promises of God is not theirs. In, in fact, eternal damnation in hell is their destination as we speak. And that breaks my heart. That, that gives me an urgency where that's why I'm speaking so bluntly to you. You see, I'm going to spend eternity in heaven with God because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me. But he didn't just do it for me. He did it for everyone on this planet. He did it for all of humanity. The good, the bad, and the ugly. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is a mon monumental opportunity for you. You can actually have life this very moment. But the only way you get it is by truly believing in what Jesus has done for you and accepting what he's done for you. It's not because some bald-headed guy stands up here and talks to you. It's truly his work. He is the 100% requirement for reconciliation. There is no other way. But each one of us has a ministry of reconciliation. Each one of us are to build that bridge so that Jesus can walk across into people's lives. So if you're standing here today and you haven't taken on that responsibility seriously, if, if, you, if you're not contributing uh, to, to Jesus working in people's lives, it's time to make a change. It's time to take this serious. He's coming back. And if you believe in, in what He's done and His promises... The urgency inside of you should be welling up as you, as you look at the things that are going on around us. Now is the time. Now is the time. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. 
Father, if there's somebody here today that has not accepted you and what you have done for them, your plan for their life, Father, I pray that you might prick their heart right now, that they are transformed into this new being that you are calling them to be. Father, I pray that they'll respond to you. I pray that my brothers and sisters will respond in action as we, as we continue to, to, to fight this battle with you, Lord. The victory is already yours. But you call us to fight. Fight for more for the kingdom. Fight to bring more to the kingdom. Father, help us to be urgent about that. Help us not to be passive in that. Father, we thank you for how you're working this out in our lives, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we have the closing song, I, I, I need to get Connor back in here. Uh, can I have somebody go grab him from Team Kid, please? And why don't you bring them in, too? Just tell them to come on in. Bring the whole Team Kid in. I appreciate your patience. I said earlier, it looks like I'm going to get out by noon. and Somebody said, yeah, right. <laughs> now let's open up them doors back here. This isn't just for these four walls. Open up them doors back here. Come on up here, Connor. Everybody, come on up. Come on. Come on. Y'all come on up here. <clears throat> right here, Connor. Right here. <clears throat> Y'all come on up. Come on. Fill in behind us here. else gets hurt in here. Oh, they keep coming. They keep coming. Come on in. Come on in. <clears throat> you know, I'm holding everybody because this is extremely important. You, you see, we're reminded that our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against each other. That, that it is really, it's a spiritual battle. It's against principalities and the authorities and, and, and the things of this world that, that perpetuate evil. Satan doesn't like losing. He's had his tail handed to him, and, and he keeps fighting and fighting and fighting. But, but he has lost, and he's lost another one today. And it's been witness to us. That does not mean he won't keep fighting. And in fact, he, I'm sure he's going to throw a, a whole bunch of different things at Connor. He's got a life in front of him, and, and he's going to need all the protection he can get. So I'm asking our church family now, if you will pray with me over Connor. Father, I want to come to you, and I lift up my brother. I call him my brother because he has accepted you as his Lord and Savior. Father, I pray that you guide his steps, each and every one. Father, I know he has a lot to learn. as I know I have a lot to learn. 
And Father, I ask that you open up his mind and his eyes and his ears to, to hear the spiritual truths that come from you, Lord. Father, I ask that you help him to see the deceptions and the lies of the evil one who might be trying to steal him back. But Father, we know that he has been sealed with you, Lord, and we, we ask that hedge of protection around him. Father, I pray that when his friends and uh, so-called friends come to him and try to pull him back, that just the opposite happens. That the love of you flowing through him brings them into the kingdom as well. Father, we thank you for how you're going to answer this, and we give you all the glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Connor, I got a little certificate for you here. It's just a piece of paper, but it means so much. It says, uh, this certifies that Connor Godby was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 17th day of September 2023 here at First Baptist Church. We also have a scripture here. Romans 6, 3 through 4. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. When I put you down below the water, Connor, it represented the death of Jesus. It represents the death of your old nature. Then it says, There we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. When you came up out of the water, it represents the new life that Jesus has placed in you. I want you to hang on to this, Connor. Please put it in a special place. And I also want you to continue to witness to it. I want you to grab mom and dad and brother, and I want you to go to the back door and allow us as we exit to welcome you into our family. Will you do that for me? How about a little encouragement? Everybody stay where you are. We're going to have a closing song now. We all get to participate. We'll, we'll go right after we get done with the closing song.
Everybody, let's let Team Kid go first so that they can get their stuff, and then we can come by and welcome Connor into the family. What are we going to be doing this week at 3.16 p.m.? Praying. Praying. 